The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Ambar Garcia, Brian Broadus, Patrick Walker, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, April 17th, 2022, season 20, episode number three. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break. We're live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. This show is presented by LG, and today we're talking draft. Um, We're going to talk about, we're going to continue our position uh, draft series. Last week, uh, we we managed to get to uh, one position. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, we hit quarterback, and uh, we talked about it, and I think we've got some clarity on the quarterback position. Today, hopefully, we'll move a little faster and maybe get two or three uh, positions in here. We only have two more shows before the draft, so we got to fit it in. It's coming at us. All right, before we get to that, though, we got to catch up on some news that happened yesterday. Cowboys signed uh, running back Royce Freeman. Listen to this in 2023 with the Rams. He had 77 rushes for 319 yards, a 4.1 average. Uh, interestingly, he hadn't really caught many passes uh, since 2019. Uh, that was when he was with Denver, and he had 43 receptions that year, averaged about six yards per reception. Last year, only had one reception for 13 yards, so not really used in that way in Los Angeles. Brian, give me a scouting report on him. What do, what do we know about him? I don't have anything on him. Nothing? I haven't looked at him at all. Okay. I'm so focused on what we're doing with the draft and stuff like that. <laughs> and, and I don't that, think I don't think it's going to keep you from drafting a right, running back. Not, That's yeah. what you know. The, you know, you look at you look at depth pieces and things like that. I'm just being real honest with you about the player. Uh, so yeah, that that to me, this is more about uh, you know, Will and those guys like to try and add players. Maybe they got a player on some value. Maybe there's some things that they liked when they. When uh, you know Henry Schroker, those guys in the pro department, uh, you know, looked at him and they thought, well, these kind of traits fit into maybe what Mike's doing and stuff like that. I, I just, if, if unless it's a running back in this draft, I am not looking at anybody else after. I understand yeah. signing guys and stuff like that, but to me, the, the best value that they're going to get, the player that's going to help them the most, is going to probably be picked next uh, next Friday for them. Yeah, you know, this isn't going to change what they do in the draft at yeah. all. Uh, this is, uh, for all intents and purposes, this is another a, a, a repeat of Ronald Jones. They're hoping that this pans out a little bit better as far as maybe um, him being able to show something in camp because obviously Ronald Jones couldn't with the groin injury and then the suspension and things like that. But it's basically just it's camp insurance type yeah. situation. This is uh, a very unprofessional take. But whatever. <laughs> oh, it, the highlights. She, the highlights have her firing on the professional takes. Very unprofessional takes, let's go. Take, let's go. But, and I'm totally judging a book by its cover, and that's absolutely wrong to do. But if I was to judge a book by its cover, and if you guys go on Cowboys Social and you see the picture of him signing, <laughs> he's a big guy. He's, a big yeah. he's very bulky. And it made me wonder immediately, I'm like, okay, how, how, fa- how fast can you be when you're that bulky? So it, it, it just led me to think, like, okay, it didn't really necessarily bring any excitement because of that, because I'm thinking, okay, maybe he lacks that kind of speed that you're hoping to get from a running back here, from a starting running back. But he does have the most experience out of all the running backs in the room right now. So that can be very helpful. But at the same time, I it, it was just like... He'd be you know, your, me being a yeah, yeah, he'd be your judging. between the tackles guy, like your power guy, like like you said, Derek. There's a reason for all, you know for the most part that he only had one reception last year. I mean, that's just that's not yeah. his bag. Yeah. All right, so you're bringing him in for power. You know, the thing that jumped out to me, Nick and I were having this conversation this morning, and I thought it was an interesting point. Um, when you look at that body type, um, one thing that we that we're going to keep an eye on throughout this entire preseason mm-hmm. is how much does uh, the new rules around kickoffs affect the types of players that you use on special teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and I made the argument, do you go bigger? Uh, let's say, for example, on kick return, can you go with bigger guys that maybe are a little bit athletic than you would normally do just because there's shorter distance between them and the defenders and you want them – you think of it now like if I've got a guard who can pull and can block in space, that may be the kind of guy I want on a kick return because right. he locks on a guy – the guy, he may have size advantage over the guy, and that creates some opportunity for my return to be able to crack through. So yeah. this guy, when you look at when you look at a guy like Royce Freeman, I wonder if maybe 
what they were looking at is can he add something to a special teams type package sure with those new rules and i think that's something we'll look at again throughout training camp throughout the preseason we'll be looking at how that this changes the kind of player you would have on special teams yeah that's uh you know when you look at guys too and you're thinking about to your point is about space players when mm -hmm. you're thinking about offensive linemen and we've seen uh, you know, if you watch the XFL and others that have used this rule, this kickoff return rule, you've seen that they've been able to get returns if you have a guy that's very shifty and very quick. So because if you could get that initial block, then you've got a guy that can maybe hit it. But on, to your point, though, you're looking at a guy that's potentially a blocker. And it used to be where you can't have every linebacker out there. It used to be teams were playing with defensive backs, too, on special teams mm -hmm. as blockers and stuff like that, tight ends. Maybe if you do have guys that are a little bit bigger but play better in space. Right then you get that opportunity to maybe bust one of these runs. Well, yeah. not to get into roster cuts yet, because we have a little while for that. A little but bit. How many, I mean, how many running backs are you keeping on the team? I always think that it's going to – I think Hunter Lipke's got a role on this team, I so yes. I'm always going to start uh -huh. with him. And then I think they're going to draft one, whether they draft that in the second round or the third round, or if they use a, a, a pick to – if they trade back situation, maybe grab one in the fourth – this draft has depth at running back, and it has it from the second round all the way through the fifth round. And you can get guys that fit different roles. Some of them are, are shorter. Some of them are wider. Some of them are quicker. Some of them catch the ball better. But that's the beauty of this draft right now with the running back spot. To me, Hunter Lipke's on this team because I feel like he does the things that Derek was just talking about. You know, unfortunately, he had the fumble, but he can short yardage. He can play special teams. You can move him as a – you can use him as a wing. You can use him as an H. You can use him a, as a fullback. There's a lot of different things. Now, which one between Davis, Dowdle, and who the rookie guy is? But I think that you're probably going to see three on this team if I had to guess. And, and dovetailing off of what he's saying, and I 100% agree, I think Hunter Lipke has a role on this team solidified. Uh, and I believe the same for Rico Dowdle as well. The question to answer – the question that leads to your answer is what's the role for Deuce Vaughn? If they yeah. figure out a role for Deuce Vaughn, then who does Deuce Vaughn push out? But as it stands, because Deuce Vaughn, although talented and he has some potential for what Mike McCarthy can use him for, we didn't see any of that right. as a rookie. So he's kind of behind the eight ball because they're likely going to add a draft pick and it's going to be a guy who's expected to come in and impact, right? So even, you know, you add that, you add Rico, that's two. You add Hunter, that's three, right? So now you have Malik Davis fighting um, against... Deuce Vaughn and maybe um, Royce Freeman or whomever other veteran they add. So I think Deuce Vaughn is the the X factor when it comes to how many running backs you're going to carry because I'm sure they're going to try to find a reason to keep Deuce around, but you got to find that reason this summer in camp. You're going to see Deuce Vaughn play a ton of special teams this year, and and I mean in the preseason, they're they're going to have to determine because if you're third back. That guy always has to play special teams. General manager will tell you that. Yeah. You know, every time he talks about running backs, he says third back has to be able to play special teams. Deuce Vaughn's height limits his ability to play special teams. You know, that's uh, again, that's he was a, a tremendous college player. He was a featured back at Kansas State. They handed him the ball. He did his job. He played no special teams. So in the league, he's in a different category. So he has to find his niche, or they have to find a niche for him, or he, you know, he will be a guy that probably they'll keep on the practice squad or something like that. And Kevontae Turpin has both hands firmly on the wheel yeah. as a returner. But let me ask so. this question because I, I think I think we all assume that when we saw these new rules, it was like Turpin's your guy. But when you think about what uh, what he was able, what Deuce Vaughn was able to do in college, he was able to do some returns. He had a nice return game. He's the kind of guy that in this kind of new format could present some interesting challenges for teams because, again, right. his short stature makes it hard sometimes to locate him, mm. and it's going to be on you pretty quick, right? And right. you got guys blocking. Does he then create maybe a, it? Is this a situation where maybe he ends up being just as good, if not better, an option at kick returns and keeping Turpin maybe at punt returns? And by the way, there is still an opportunity for you to get a third receiver. Maybe you use Turpin more as a third receiver combined with punt returns, and you use Vaughn in that other way. Do you see a scenario like that for Vaughn? How many plays do you see Vaughn playing a game? What's your envision for Vaughn for games played? Honestly, or for a number of plays? It depends on whether they could find a role for him as a running back. If they yeah. can find a role yeah. for him as a running back that can be that can catch the ball out of the backfield, sure. maybe give me, I don't know, 10 reps there right. a game, and then give me some kick returns, 
that may give him a, enough of a role to make the team. See, Maybe. that's why that's why Turpin is your guy because he plays more offensive snaps. Yep. He's going to be your punt returner and he's going to be your kick returner. So to me, it's if if he, if the thing with Vaughn can he get enough snaps to take to justify? You're to saying justi- it's, not, it's not worth doing that when you've got a Turpin. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing about it is he has got to be better than Turpin on offense. Yeah, and I think that they they found ways to use Turpin on offense that Finally other than the the jet sweeps and things yeah. like that yeah. they were they were finding ways him actually running routes him down believe down it or not in the red zone making plays down there. So, yeah, it's going, the competition is going to be how many plays can they find for Deuce Vaughn. And, you know, you can't just say, okay, he's dressing every week because he's a kick returner. You know, the great – what they'll neutralize you on that one is they'll just say, okay, if you're any good at this, they'll just kick the ball out of the end zone and they won't let you return anything. Yep. You know, that's, that's how they'll neutralize you there if that's the case. Real quick, Brian, before we go to break, give me a couple names. And if you guys have some names as well – uh, give me some names. I want to know some names of some guys that you would think about for the Cowboys if they were going to draft in the first round, if they were going to draft in the second round, and if they were going to draft later than that at the running back position that that might be of interest to the Cowboys. I think you'd have to start with Brooks from Texas, you know, with the knee injury and all. Or the first round pick? No, with the second round second pick. Round. I don't have a first round running Got back it. right now. So I think you look at Brooks from Texas, you look at Benson, uh, I think from Florida State, make a lot of sense for you. If you're looking down now into the third round, Wright from Tennessee, Allen from Wisconsin, Irvin from Oregon, make a lot of sense of a third round uh, type of thing. If you're going a little bit later, I think fourth round guys, I would look at Ray Davis as a possibility there. He's played a lot. He's been in three different places. Kentucky has been his final stop here. Estime from Notre Dame is another guy. If you want to go all the way down into the fifth round, Tracy from uh, from, uh, Purdue makes a lot of sense. He was a converted wide receiver from Iowa. He's a guy that kind of reminds me a little bit of Tony Pollard, wide receiver that's playing running back kind of a guy. So keep an eye on Tracy from Purdue uh, would be another guy that I would look at. Those are kind of the rounds <laughs> two, three, four, and five right there. Well, there are so many running backs with different abilities and strengths. Mm-hmm. So looking at the group that they currently have and everybody that we've talked right now, I mean, what kind of running back – type of guy or style are you guys looking for right now personally Good. me <laughs> nice <Okay. laughs> well yeah Good, but... <laughs> impactful yeah dynamic in whatever they're being asked to do yeah. um I, when you look at the issue between dowdle and the redundancy between dowdle skill set and tony pollard's mm-hmm. last year right what were you missing you were missing that sledgehammer and the sword which is the skip pete reference right zeke pollard you were missing that so pollard walks you retain dowdle you still need that complement, right? So for me, I'm looking for a complementary piece, which would be that power back, the one who can do the heavy lifting, the dirty work, a lot of that, pick up most of those blocks, whatever the case may be, your A-gaps, your B-gaps. And hopefully, every once in a while, he'll leak out of the backfield and give you an, a random option as a receiver, but that wouldn't necessarily be his bag as much as it would be Rico's bag. So, so you see Dow more as a Pollard? I see Dow, yeah, I do Zeke. see Dow. As, okay. They've been missing Zeke. They missed Zeke last year, and they don't have a Zeke on the team right okay. now, which is why – not even remotely similar, but we talked about Royce Freeman's build, right? He's kind of that girthier build. They are looking for that power, right? So when you talk about someone like Estime, for example, mm-hmm. that's a guy, big guy, powerful. He can make guys pay for trying to tackle him. That's what you need, in my opinion, the compliment. But can I take a step back? Is there a single running back currently on this roster that you think of as starter caliber in the NFL? No. Okay, so if <laughs> no, and, and, and I, that's, that's not that's, that's where, not that's necessarily that's where knock I look on anybody. At, that's why I look at. No, see, I just, like Hunter, but he's not there no, yet. That, he's right, not there. That's yet. why I look at Brooks and Benson. As right, I'm looking for a featured guy. There you go. I'm looking you go. for because the problem that I have is though that I need I need an explosive player. I know that Tony Pollard got healthy halfway through the season. They didn't block well enough for mm-hmm. anybody to run the football at all. So we didn't see that with Tony. But to me, I need a guy that's going to mi- make people miss. I'm going to make. I need a guy that's going to be able to make pe- to catch the ball when thrown to. Now this team does not throw the ball to the backs. Mm. You know, they, you have to be able to blitz pickup to play here. But to me, give me the guy that can make the first guy miss, maybe make the second guy miss, and then turn maybe a a negative play or a zero yard play into a four or five yard play. That's what I need right now. I think Hunter Lipke could be the power guy. Yeah, mm. myself. I do. I think Rico Dowdle, if you hand the ball to Rico Dowdle, he could he could do some power things yep. for you. I need an elusive guy. I need somebody. Now, 
the thing with to me Brooks Benson both those guys Lloyd from USC yeah, I would complete. take all those guys yeah. because I know they can make people miss in the hole and I know they can make five six yards on their own yeah you know yeah that I guess the point I was making is that I think they got a lot of guys who are complementary parts right. that would be nice yeah. with a feature back I right. think the, right. if, when you ask what are they missing? I'm like, they need a feature. That's why I said it's, good. I need a feature back mm-hmm. that I can then use these other guys in in spurts to be able to complement what that person does. They're looking at a kid named Bucky Irving from Oregon, mm-hmm. who's a little bit of a shorter guy. Bucky Irving needs a complimentary back with him. He is not a featured back. Brooks, Benson, those guys, to me, Lloyd, Wright, those guys could play as featured backs. Allen from, uh, from Wisconsin's yeah. a little bit more of a power guy probably could use somebody with a little bit more explosiveness to play with. I think Bucky Irving is the opposite. He's explosive, but he needs somebody to play with power. How how, how likely do you think it is that Brooks is actually there when you pick in the second round? Everybody's got him earmarked, and, and we'll, see, we'll see what happens with teams and the medical on him. Are they yeah. going to take a back that's had a knee injury? Everybody's kind of got him earmarked here at Dallas. Yeah. You know, to me, I could see it happening at 56. I could also see Dallas picking a linebacker at 56. Mm-hmm. I think those are the two positions you kind of need to keep an eye on. Assuming right? they're going to go offensive line first. Assuming, assuming it's a tackle center, some combination yeah. of offensive linemen in the first. All right. Let's go ahead and take our first break. We'll come back. Uh, we've already hit the, the running back position in one, uh, one segment. So now let's go. Oops. We can uh, jump into <laughs> wide receivers. I didn't give a scouting schedule. report about a guy who signed. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we'll jump into wide receiver when we come back. This is Dallas Cowboys. Radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot, Rowdy, cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks, girl. Better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you back to the break okay the 11th annual uh, reliant home run derby is back at riders field in frisco on may 1st at 6 p.m come see your favorite dallas cowboy players swing for the fences to raise money for the salvation army admission and parking are free visit dallascowboys.com slash reliant h R.D. to learn more. See you there. Welcome back to the second segment of The Break Live from SWBC Mortgage Studios presented by LG. This segment brought to you by blockchain.com. All right, let's talk about the wide receiver position. I want to start with with Brandon Cooks. He was a guy that I think we all universally thought a lot of when the Cowboys acquired his services last season. Um, And I, I personally, I think he played okay. I don't think he was bad. I don't think he was great. I think he played okay. My question for you guys is, how much more do you think he has uh, that he can provide for this team this coming year, especially with it being his second year with Dak, second year in the offense, second year with CD? How much more do you think he can provide this team? Um, Simply put, a lot. Uh, I think when you look at his body of work from 2023, 
yes, he he really started to come into his own on the back half of that season, but it was a slow start on the first half of the season, which makes you wonder if he was able to kind of hit the ground running. Um, what could last season have been for Brandon Cooks? Could it have approached a thousand yards, especially with Michael Gallup having his struggles? So I feel like if you put it in that context alone, then this season, especially when you add to the context of uh, he is going into a contract year, right? So he also has a lot to prove in that capacity as well. I, I just feel like there was a lot of meat left on the bone when it comes to uh, Brandon Cooks's utilization as far as Mike McCarthy returning as a play caller. I think you'll see much more of Brandon Cooks being used in 2024, and I think he's going to take advantage of it. Yeah, I think that's exactly what what was missed last year was more of in, what I feel like that they just weren't using him enough. How many times did we sit here week after week talking about and Brian breaking down plays mm -hmm. and, and and saying how many times he was open, yeah. mm -hmm. but the ball, he wasn't targeted, and right. the ball wouldn't go his way. So I think that after Mike McCarthy analyzes the whole season and everything and, and seeing his production towards the second half, tor towards that end of the season, I think it, that we would go into a year where we see him be – a lot more involved and teams take him more as a bigger weapon in combination with CD Lamb and what he's doing. Cause CD had a great year as well. Where's the vertical passing game with this guy? Where was all the speed down the field? Where was the, you know, there was a, I think it was the commander's game. The commanders couldn't cover all of us running routes. You know, I mean, they, he, I think he made in that commander's game. I think he made several plays down the field and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I was hopeful for with the, when you start to talk about Brandon cooks, Everything for him, though, he started to become the guy when they figured out that Michael Gallup couldn't catch the underneath stuff on third down, that they just went ahead and started picking for uh, for Cooks to be able to run those routes. He made some really key catches underneath. He's really not a big slant guy, which you know Lamb is. So, yeah, if, if, if it's more involvement for Cooks, I'd like to see it more down the field uh, than what we saw last time. But – you know, there, this is a very, very deep draft at a lot of different uh, uh, spots, a lot of different types of guys, a lot of different body types, a lot of different abilities in here. So if they're looking to uh, – if they have that pick where they say best failure player on the board, it happens to be a wide receiver, it's probably going to be a pretty good pick because there, there's, a, there's a quality in this uh, draft when it comes to that wide receiver room. Who has the best chance right now on this team, not just the, not the draft, but just already on this team of being your wide receiver three? I'm going to go with Jalen Tolbert. I, I love the strides that that young man made from year one to year two. He was overwhelmed in year one during the headlights was the phrase that he used. Um, but when the Cowboys traded for Brandon Cooks, first thing I said is Jalen Tolbert needs to just attach himself, glue himself to Brandon Cooks and learn as much as he can. And he did. Uh, and he showed a lot of improvement because of that. So at, um, nearly every time that ball was targeted to Jalen uh, Tolbert, to did I say Tolbert? Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay. my head said Brooks. Okay, too many Jalen's. Um, whenever Jalen Tolbert got the opportunity and he was targeted by Dak Prescott, more often than not, he made he took advantage of it. Uh, and I remember one distinctive game where he had a drop, but the confidence wasn't lost because Dak Prescott went right back to him two plays later and it was a first down. So you can see that the confidence is also there from QB1. So when you have that confidence from the franchise quarterback and now you have your, you know, your self-confidence is built up to say, hey, I can actually play this game at this level. I do see Jalen Tolbert and he should get more reps uh, considering Michael Gallup is no longer in the building. I want everyone to be great. And that's like a very... Aww. Yeah, <laughs> but that makes you want to hug, right? But yeah. it's, the it's, a, it's an unrealistic thing because not everyone can be yeah. great or the start player yeah. on offense or the team as a whole. So I'm just sitting here wondering, can Jalen Tolbert, even though he did show moments last season where he has taken that step up, mm. is he enough though? I don't know. Is it, but then thinking about his specific role, that's where I'm like, okay, do I need to lower more my my mental personal expectation to where, okay, is he just enough for the role that you actually need him to be? And I, I don't know. I I can't answer that question right now. Well, here's, I don't know how I, I exactly feel right now. Here's my, my approach to that. When, because if you go back and you look at Tobert's film um, from 2023, 
there were several times where the ball was being forced to Michael Gallup, for example, where maybe those balls should have been tossed to Jalen Tolbert. And then in the, a subsequent game, you would see Michael Gallup's targets drop to like one or two, and then you would see Tolbert's increase, and Tolbert was much more productive running the same, being asked to run the same routes in the same packages. So I feel like that was McCarthy kind of grooming him to say, hey, if Gallup is not in the building next year, this is going to be a huge shot for you. And I believe that he his build is not entirely dissimilar. Right, he has a great catch radius. You, you've seen him a couple toe drag swag catches on the sideline, which is something that Michael Gallup became famous for here in Dallas. I believe the athleticism is there. The only thing that was lacking for Jalen Tolbert in year one was the mental component. I feel like he has the mental component now. So the only thing he needs now is utilization in order to kind of make it all come together. Jalen Polk from the University of Washington. <laughs> <laughs> he said it would be here, bro. Brian's like, I'm not playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Brian, focused on Brian the drop. Like Ricky, Ricky, drop Ricky, show. Ricky, Ricky <laughs> Pierce saw Florida wide receiver. Uh -huh. Yeah, better than any of the guys they got here. Let's go. Now let me ask you this: What round? Are, yeah, no, what? talking like third, second, third round. Malachi, uh, Malachi Corley. They brought Corley in. I know it was a lot of it had to do with visit, probably to get the medical because he got COVID before the combine, so he didn't get to do he didn't get to do all the visits and stuff. All three of those guys I named are better players. But let me ask you this. Are you willing to? You said second, third round. Are you yeah. willing to, knowing that you got, you got areas where you need help? Center. I need players. Offensive. I know center, offensive tackle, sure. running back, linebacker sure. probably are way more of a priority for you to be able to win games next season second, than a third, third wide round. receiver. Second, third round. Sure. Yeah. So, absolutely. so are you willing? Are you willing to forego those positions if in order the, to get a, players, a wide receiver? If the players are the wide receiver players are better on my board in that say. I'm going to try and address my needs the first two picks is what I'm going to try and do. Mm -hmm. I get in the third, fourth, fifth round. If you know, I know Patrick's going to do a mock draft for you this week. He's going to trade back. He's going to trade up. He's going to oh, do I'm all going kinds to get of frisky. So, so I'm saying, if I could find a way to grab some of these picks, and this this organization has proven one thing: when I told them that they needed a defensive end, what they do? They drafted a wide receiver in the first round. They, they've proven they can do that, and it worked. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. You know, they will they will sit there and say, "Oh, well, hey, watch we, this." <laughs> yeah, watch this. We'll take. Well, I'll I'll take that third round center off your board at pick thirty and, yeah. and be Travis Frederick. Yeah, you know they'll do that here. So to me, if I need to address the center tackle position, if I need to address the linebacker position. I'm not going to let the one position I think that's holding me hostage right now is center. center yep. That's the one position that's holding me hostage. Maybe the left tackle is holding me hostage too. But, but at least yeah. you got options. But I have an option. You got there. options. Yeah. I have at an least option. You got options. There. Girl. Yeah. So, so <laughs> break glass in case of emergency. Girl. I'm going to get that center, and then from then on, I'm going to take whoever I need, whoever I say, that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. That's what I'm going to do. So, whatever we're thinking, think the opposite because that's what they might do. Oh, but they've proven that. They have. They've proven they have. that. Yeah, when, I, when I'm telling them they need a, an edge <laughs> from LSU, you know, they need this guy to play, what do they do? They Chase took C.D. Lamb. Yeah. And they took one of the best players in the NFL. So, to me, mm -hmm. yes. Who's, who's going to be the third receiver? Polk, Pearson, yeah. <laughs> Corley. Any one of those guys you want to name. You know, I'm actually very interested, interested to see – if they can find more of a role for Cavante Turpin, I really sure. believe yeah. that you exactly. look at, at the productivity. Maybe he's cooks. Yeah, exactly. But you look at the produ productivity he had in underneath. college. Yeah, you look at what he did in college. I think he is more than capable of being at least a third receiver in the NFL. Yes. The question is just will they be willing to use him in that way? Right. And if they are, I think that could be a very, very nice player for you, at least for this year. I don't know what happens beyond this year, but for this year, I do think that could be a very nice player. I for think you. you'll see more um, usage for Kevontae Turpin this year. Uh, but for me, it's just it's Jalen Tolbert's strides forward in addition to the fact that that's your former third-round pick. Right, so that you know that val that value is there as well. You want to see him develop. You want to see him become an impact guy, and you move Michael Gallup out of the situation so that he could you know have that potential shot. Now, not to say they're not going to take a wide receiver because that's still definitely on the board potentially. But I mean, until slash unless they do, Jalen Tolbert, it, it's your keys at wide receiver three. But yeah, I do agree. I think Turpin's going to get more use more use than I. They haven't signed Lamb yet either. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Yeah, you know. 
I mean, how does that gonna? How's that all gonna shake out? Yeah, and we'll why see. Are you dry, why are you adding more stuff into the pot right now? <laughs> <laughs> because that's where we are right now. He's just like, no, because that's where we are right now. That's where we are right now. Loves making gumbo, it, it, throwing it, it, things together in there. Just throw everything in there. It's much better to talk about on on April seventeenth. No, it is on on September July on July. Yeah, as we're sitting on the as we're sitting on the court in Oxnard and being like. We're seating. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Amber, Amber. Amber. Well, you know, the receiver room doesn't look very good right now. The whole Zach Martin thing. Yeah, I want to so remind you of like, April uh, 17th. <laughs> All right, we're going to take our final break. Come back. A little, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, tight end position. Maybe get to offensive tackle and center. We'll do that in a second. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Don't put off getting your oil change, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change. A proud partner of the Cowboys is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboy Cowboys VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back to the break. Hey, let's talk about that draft guide. Uh, it's one of the best magazines you're going to get to get you ready for this uh, NFL draft. A lot of hard work goes into that. I know I spent a lot of my years working on that thing, and it is uh, in-depth. Scouting reports in the top college players with more than 400 uh, prospects, plus there are breakdowns of Cal uh, the Cowboys' needs at each position. A look back 10 years ago to the team's dramatic draft, the annual first-round mock draft, and more. Get your copy of the 2024 draft guide at your local pro shops or dallascowboys.com slash star. Welcome back to the final segment of The Break presented by LG. Uh, we've talked about quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and now let's jump to tight end. Let's start first with assessment. I want you guys to give me a, an assessment of Luke Schoonmaker, and I want you to go back to the first time you saw him in training camp, uh, and through injury and other things like what what have you seen from him and what do you project that to be coming into this season so hard to project because his his sample size it wasn't what you wanted it to be hmm. as as the second round pick you miss all of training camp with the plantar fasciitis issue hmm. and then when you come back you're you're slow to get back into the groove which makes i mean that tracks you're a rookie who missed all of training camp right um you know thank the good lord for the uh, the leap forward that Jake Ferguson was able to take. So you're absolutely solid there for now in the future. But from Schoolmaker, I, I did see some progress. So I give him credit for that. He still struggled at times um, as far as the understanding of uh, the package that he might have been in in any particular time. Blocking was definitely up there. Like I, I am a big fan of his blocking. That's something that he did very well at Michigan as well. Uh, as a play, as a play, oh, sorry, as a uh, pass catcher. 
there's development that needs to happen there. He needs to be more consistent with being able to bring in some of those um, some of those targets that he's getting from Dak Prescott. We saw on uh, a couple of occasions, one being an end zone, red zone, uh, red zone toss, where he just couldn't come up with the pass. Uh, and you and you need him to be able to do that if you want him building confidence with Dak Prescott. So for me, blocking, it's there. It's been there with at Michigan. It's going to continue to be there. But as a pass catcher, he really needs to take that next step to be that true complement to Jake Ferguson. So that's kind of where I am. I think he can, as long as he stays healthy this offseason, gets a full training camp under his belt, we should see some progress there. Yeah, he got that shoulder surgery, though, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dealing with that. Yeah. Let me introduce you to Eric All from <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Eric, I was Eric, about to say, you can't drive to every Eric, 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 Eric All is a really good player from Iowa, by the way. Um, yeah, I think the thing, I, I'm in the – I'm the number one driver of the Luke Schoonmaker bus. I'm the guy. So when you get on the bus, you see me first. And at Iowa, he was an outstanding blocker. Uh, he was a great port of attack player. Uh, when they ran the ball, if you look at Blake Corum, uh, the success that he had at Michigan running the ball, Michigan winning the national championship, Michigan doing a lot of great things. Michigan a very good offense. Michigan a very physical offense. He was part of that. He was part of that. And so what happens is scouts are taught as if you see it once, you'll see it again. Mm -hmm. The problem is we didn't see it with Luke Schoonmaker, whether it was the foot, now the shoulder. He keeps getting set back. I think Luke Schoonmaker cares a lot about his job. Mm -hmm. I think he wants to be good at his job. I think he wants to develop into a tight end. I think he understands the pressure that's on him as a player, as a second-round pick. They need Luke Schoonmaker to play a lot better because yep. they did not run the ball well with him in there or with what was going on at center. These are positions we're looking at it right now, and you know we're trying to figure that out. How do you run the ball better? Point of attack tight end, Luke Schoonmaker, second-round pick, was supposed to be that guy. Hasn't been that guy, you know? And I'm sitting here looking like thinking, okay, did I miss one here? Did I, I'm not calling it a bust or anything. I'm saying, did I miss one here? But the, the, the Michigan film showed a much better player. And I think those guys upstairs saw the same thing I did. And that's why they drafted the player. But the shoulder injury now is setback. He'll fight through it. He'll do what he has to do. Brent Brown will get him right. But they need him to play better. Yeah, definitely, as every, both of y'all have said, we have not seen enough of him. And I don't know what it is, but something about his body built that I just don't necessarily love for his position. I don't know what it's it, it like. He has that type of body that it makes you think of like he's not going to be as athletic or as flexible oh, no, and being able unit. to. Yeah, he's a youth. Yeah, yeah, he time. is. But I'll tell you this. One thing that I love about him, and you talked about his dedication and yeah. wanting to be – good at his job is the amount of time that I've seen him even through injuries and everything work, yeah. work, work, work. And the last player that I've seen work so hard like that was Sean Lee. Mm. Sean Lee has been the only other player that I've seen through whatever setback that spends the time out there, even on his own, just kind of working separately and working through everything. And I absolutely love about him that he has that type of, dedication and willing to put in the work the necessary work to hopefully it's get a shame better. it's with Britt brown though you know it's a shame yeah. he's doing with yeah. his injury yeah. right now it, it, yeah. the hard work and all that yeah and he wants to get back but man they need players yeah. they need guys to step up and you're right about ferguson the development of ferguson has been wonderful so they need luke yeah. to kind of yeah you know, we've seen it dalton schultz i mean I, I was so critical of Dalton Schultz, he blocked me on Twitter, which is fine. You know, I mean, <laughs> he blocked if it, everybody. If, on Twitter. If, it, if it takes me getting blocked by Luke Schoonmaker, who I'm driving is I'm driving the bus. It's the zoo in here. You know? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> man. Just let me let me. He's blocked you know, block, everybody. If, it's you know, okay. if, if it, yeah, whatever I can do to help you block you, you block me, but block the the, yeah. the, the yeah. five tech you block, too. Just block. Yeah, block. Yeah. Yeah. block. Yeah. I tell you yeah. what, when it comes to tight ends uh, and we talk about um, and, and really quickly, excellent point because about Schoolmaker last training camp, 
his first training camp ever. He was out with the plantar fasciitis. Yeah. What did you see him doing? Mental reps. He mm-hmm. was always on the mm-hmm. sideline. He Catch was always him asking with the machine uh, thing. Lunda Wells. He was always asking yeah. questions to Jake Ferguson, trying to figure out, hit him the shot, trying to get the nuances, whatever he could get, he was trying to consume. But and for a rookie, that's that huge. tells you a lot. That's very re- coachable, yeah. and he wants to learn. He wants to get better. And to Brian's point. The Cowboys now need him yeah. to put that on the field. Yeah. Um, but a, an interesting one, he's coming back from the torn ACL. Let's talk about John Stevens Jr. Yeah. Let's talk, I mean, this is a, a young man, undrafted. He made waves, serious waves in training camp. He was making waves in preseason, not unlike the Marvion Overshone was doing. And unfortunately, they both suffered the same fate torn ACL. But when you talk about John Stevens Jr., I think he can make some some uh, problems for a player like Peyton Hendershot, who, who's shown that he can be a player as well. But Hendershot, he was on IR last season until later in the season, came back, made a, a splash pay or two on special teams, but not necessarily offensively. So when you're now talking about behind Schoonmaker and Jake Ferguson, what's that battle with Hendershot? John uh, Stevens Jr. looks like um, and also Princeton Fant looks like Princeton Fant has basically taken Sean McEwen out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm really intrigued and excited to see what John Stevens will be now that he's healthy or getting back to health and how he becomes that that um, that catching threat. Right, because he's long, he's lanky, he can be a red zone threat for you. This is a guy who can line up at tight end, or you could pop him out and he can give you some slot duties in the red zone. So, uh, we talk about receiver, you can get some of those reps in the red zone to a, a rangy, lanky guy like John Stevens. So, I think there's value there for him. All right, let's jump to the center position. Um, and here's my question last year, obviously, they had Tyler Biotish. Um, and according to I think many people who are watching, Didn't think it was his best year. Um, There is a belief that the Cowboys are looking at their current roster and thinking uh, Hoffman has an opportunity to be their center this year if they don't draft someone. I think we all think they will. But if they don't, they think or there's a belief that maybe they think Hoffman could be that guy. Based on what you've seen from Hoffman, do you think Hoffman could be at least as good as what Biotish was last year in a a year where maybe it wasn't the greatest play from, from the center position? I think Hoffman has the potential to eventually be a starter in this league. But you meant, you said something a couple segments ago that holds true and permeates everything we're talking about. You need whatever player you're talking about to be good right now. Mm-hmm. He has to be that right now. So he has to – and though Tyler Biadish didn't necessarily play at the Pro Bowl level that he did the year prior – you, you basically, you lost a Pro Bowl center, right? So can Hoffman be that good eventually? Possibly so. Right now, I don't feel good enough about that to be able to go into this draft and not look at the center position as being one of my highest, if not my highest priority. So Hoffman, he has the ability, but maybe given time, he could become that. But guess what you don't have right now? Time. Mm-hmm. I got four centers in this draft. Let's go. <laughs> five. That's where we're going. I got four centers, maybe five, that, that I feel that could be better than Hoffman and even Biotish. Okay. Okay. And what I'm thinking about, like right now. Yeah. What I'm thinking about doing is I need to go here. I need to go early because what's going to happen is when you get down to the fifth round, maybe late four or fifth round, you start to get players like Biotish. Mm. So I'm trying to upgrade my center spot. Okay. Powers Johnson from uh, Oregon is that's his hyphenated last name. That's his. uh, So he's, he's one of these guys. He's the best center in the draft. The problem is he's dealing with some medical things, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to get into all of them. It's keeping him to it's, – it's one of those things that might be keeping him off some people's boards. The Cowboys brought him in as a 30-visit guy. They've talked to this kid. They know, they know the medical and all that. Let's see how comfortable they really, really are. Uh, there's a lot of mock drafts that had him going very high. I'm sure Patrick's seen them all. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden – Medical information came back from the combine, and he started falling down boards. Mm. And people were saying, oh, maybe you could get him now at 56. Maybe you could trade way back. Maybe you could get him at 31. Mm-hmm. You trade back. You keep you know, doing all that. So he's the best center. Barton from, uh, from Duke, super smart guy, high intelligence guy. Not just because of Duke, but you watch him play football. He's that kind of guy. He's a tackle. He's played center early in his career. He's played all the offensive line positions. He's mean. He's nasty. He's tough. He can. He's athletic. There's a lot of really positive things about him. I don't think he gets to you. I just don't. I just think that maybe that people are saying, well, he's a little bit healthier, but even though he's dealing with the shoulder thing, he's a little bit healthier, healthier than what you have with Powers Johnson. 
Frazier from West, uh, from West Virginia. Here's a guy, if you watch the Texas games, Texas got two monsters that play inside. Yeah. They got a kid named Murphy, and they got a guy named Sweat. Both are going to be in the draft. Both will be in draft. <laughs> one's one's going to be picked probably in the first round. Yep. Sweat, if he – you know, if he, if if he cleared falls. out everything that, you know. Sometimes we have some problems on yeah, the field. Yeah, trust happens. me, my son goes to school there, he has the same problems. <laughs> it it so the, the thing about it is, though, the, the thing about these guys, he blocks those guys. So I'm watching him block NFL-type players and, and handle them. Yeah. So I'm thinking, Frazier, West Virginia, maybe a trade-back situation. I don't think he gets to you at 56. This is the problem I'm running into now, you know. Might have to go up. I know we're so talking. So just to be clear, did you think Barton doesn't get to you at twenty four? I don't think Barton gets. Okay, to you don't you. think Barton gets to you at twenty four? No, and I and think, you don't think that- I, I think I have Powers ahead of him, Powers right. Johnson ahead of him, but I don't. I think people will look at Barton and they will say the healthier guy, similar type players. These guys are. Powers Johnson's three hundred twenty eight hmm. pounds. Woo. He's six four, and he and he just yeah, and he he plays second level. They pull him. He gets into his block. He's just not completely healthy. Mm-hmm. Somebody will say he's healthy enough for me, which this football team might do it because they don't have anybody that's good enough like him to play center. Mm-hmm. He will make a difference in this running game. The, when you, I don't want you to get too. I mean, obviously, you, you, the, the the medicals are the medicals. Yeah. Is it stuff that's because sometimes the medicals can be right a right now thing like. I don't know how healthy he is right now. Sometimes it is, hey, I don't long know how term, long. Yeah, is long this, is this, can he only play four years in long the NFL term. without? See, yeah. we, we, they lost Frederick because of an unfortunate right. illness. Mm-hmm. But, you, you know, but you only, man, you had one of the best centers in National Football League only play for you for just a little bit of time. Yeah. Just like a college player, just a little bit of time, and then you moved on, you know. So, yeah, it, it, it's there are centers there. Van Pran from Georgia, another guy. Cold okay, up. so yeah, good player, you know, three hundred pound guy, really good athlete, second level guy. Pull him, reach him, do all these things with him. So now we're starting to get into the guys that were kind of a little bit like what we just dealt with, what we had at center with Biotish. So to me, if you're Dallas, it's got to happen early, first, second, One, third, potentially. Yes, yeah. that's where it's got to happen. Yeah. And for those for those top three, I think it's going to have to happen first or second, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's where you're at right now. <laughs> I mean, now. honestly, I think I think center is probably, if I had to just kind of rate them, I think center is the position I think that's most necessary that the Cowboys get right this draft mm-hmm. because yeah. I really don't see a lot of options there. There's, like I said, you, tackle position, you might not want to do it, but you got an option. Right. You know, you, you linebacker, you might not love your depth, but you got some guys you can roll out there yeah. day one. Running back, that's another one where I'm like, I don't feel comfortable with where they are right now as we sit. So those are probably my two positions. I'm like, you got to do something early in the draft in those Center, positions. you have an option to tackle. There's depth at running back that through the draft that, that you can grab. So you go later. Yeah. You could go later there. I mean, there's the problem they're going to have is if they're looking for that one technique. And mm. I know they drafted Mozzie Smith. Mike Zimmer, God, I love you, brother. Please do something for him. I mean, help him. But that's kind of help where you're him. at right now. That's where you're <laughs> at right now. Because you don't have a lot of depth at that one technique yeah. when it comes to this draft. Unless unless Sweat. And there's people, I've talked to people around the league with Sweat. They're like, they don't think he works hard. They don't think he really cares. You know, there's. I mean, these are things. Yeah. This is not coming from me or DallasCowboys.com. I mean, this is just... Things I'm hearing around the league. So please don't tag us at sweat and say, oh, <laughs> DallasCowboys.com. The Cowboys right. think you're you a bum. Coming. Not true. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're gonna get tagged in a lot of you things. Get ready. Coming. Yeah. But but that but talking to people around the league, I will make that clear. He's off a lot of boards yeah. because of the of the stuff with the, the off the field stuff. You know, and maybe that's the one where you say, He's too good to pass. Well, I will tell you this. As somebody that watched every single down of every single Texas game last year, dude can play. Yeah. Like, I don't know about the off-field. I haven't spent time with him off the field. I don't know people who spend time with him off the field. What I know is on the field, he was probably the most dynamic player on that defense last season. And that was a good defense. Him and Murphy are for real. Yeah, he was a guy that was 
always making plays yeah. and always making plays from the one technique, which yeah. is not yeah. a common thing to see. Yeah. And uh, but I, I will tell you, a guy can play. Yeah. So whatever it is that's off the field, that has to be factored in because yeah. we've seen guys that have a lot of talent do a lot of things right. in college. You have to factor in those things because sometimes it doesn't translate because of off the field stuff. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you, the dude can play. He you will, you will sell your soul in that room to get a player that can play. Yeah, he can play, he man. He will. I mean, you will like, okay, tell me again what he did. Okay, what else? <laughs> All right, That's he's fine. So Let's go. Bad. Let's go. Yeah. Turn it in. Turn the card in. You know, yeah. really, you will, you will grimace. You will <laughs> flinch. You will close your eyes. But then you remember how good the player is. Yeah. You know, but that's the center is the center. Like I say, I am trying to get better than Biotish. And I think I can do it. Yep. If you let me do it in the first couple of picks. All right. That's a wrap. We'll be back next Wednesday. It'll be day before draft. So we'll be getting you guys ready for the draft and what we think is going to happen as the draft starts on Thursday night. Till then, for Patrick Walker, Brian Broaddus, and Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?